when discussing the children's television that Brits grew up with, this is the big one. As its original run went 20 years from 1972 to 1992, clearing over a thousand episodes, multiple generations can rightly claim Rainbow as their childhood. Rainbow was and remains a pop culture behemoth, with a set of iconic characters that had every impressionist, be it on the playground or on telly, going, Hello, Zippy, hoo hoo hoo. Oh, shut up, George, you stupid old Willy. Davro's takeoff was so popular, he ended up cameoing on the show, courtesy of the lowest quality clip I've ever used. Whatever's the matter, Zippy? Oh, 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 they're an odd collection of housemates, with an adult man legal guardian to a felt Satsuma gimp, a very camp bear, and an even camper pink hippo. Required to exist from behind desks and walls, voiced by a single man deftly switching between characters, George and Zippy had the aura of a Greek chorus, although as the braggadocious Zippy and shy George were both single-handed, Neither could tie a shoe, nor use a PlayStation controller. Oh. Hello, they sound happy today. To market, to market, to buy a fat hog. The classic lineup actually took a while to fall into place, hosted for its first three years by David Cook, and with George not showing up until Series 2. The following year, in came Jeffrey, and out went David plus Sunshine and Mooney, another pair of puppets ousted to make airtime for Zippy and George. Bungle himself went through a few changes, from an initial design straight from the parade in the Wicker Man, to near enough the Teddy-like Bungle we know, except with a pale tummy and noticeably separate headpiece, before finally landing on the quintessential version. However, the 96 reboot Rainbow Days clearly decided it was time to scare the shit out of kids again. Even Zippy started out a little different, with this really unsettling mouth movement, and dialogue for the first year by Peter Hawkins, before Roy Skelton bought the voice we were all doing. With the three non-humans differing personalities, children could always find one to identify with, which were you. Though I never shut up, I was occasionally called George at school thanks to my beautiful long eyelashes. So take us in, warm us up, tip us in that coffee cup. The Rainbow House was regularly visited by Rod, Jane and Freddie, whose pansexual commune must have been just down the road. For more on the fantastic trio, check out my video about their post-Rainbow Solo series. Right, let's dive into some episodes. Each is a short 15 minutes around a theme, educational in nature, and often written by various members of the cast. Over the course of two decades, they did shows about practically anything you can think of, covering all the main issues relevant to an audience of five-year-olds birthdays, road safety, keeping fit, but stretching into everything. Mirrors and horses, highwaymen and teeth, there's even one about the Mothman. When you run that long, eventually you'll get real specific. Well, no, Zippy. Mm -hmm. Now listen, you mustn't eat that sandwich. Why not, Jeffrey? Well, because it fell on the ground, didn't it? It'd be covered in dirt. Oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah. look, Zippy, it is all dirty. Don't eat dirty sandwiches. Though as always, it's my duty to point out that anything which eats must also defecate. Does his anus, you know. Mm. Oh, well I've finished now, Jeffrey. Can I go and play in the sandpit? Yes, all right, Bungle. Yeah. Oh, but listen, put some old clothes on, won't you? Because you're bound to get dirty. Bungle carries the Donald Duck dilemma occasionally wearing some clothes which just emphasises the otherwise naturism, like putting a towel round his waist when he's had a bath. 
With the limited tech back then, it must have taken some poor sod ages to paint out Bungle's genitals. Ooh. Yeah, I wonder if Jane Rod and Freddy know a song about getting dirty. Who? Jane Rod and Freddy. I suppose you like Britain's Got Talent with Deck and Ant. Oh Christ, their faces aren't done the same, are they? God for that. Clean hands, dirty hands. Listen to what we say. Don't give it away for free. That's premium content for the wiki feet lot. Actually, there's an idea. Might get a few extra views out of this. Dirty hands, feet, clothes. We should get out of here before this bloke shows up. Yes, that's it, Jeffrey. <laughs> Tap those feet, Jeffrey. <laughs> they did a whole other episode on feet. If I isolated this clip, I'd get about 10 million hits off it. <laughs> Jeffrey even shows off his shoes. And these are my sandals. Yeah. Looks like a fucking dog chew. Your arches must be in a shocking state. Five wiggly toes on that foot. And there are five wiggly toes on that foot too. And uh, oh, there's an ankle here so that I can bend the foot. Jimmy, can, can you use your feet like hands and pick things up? Please, I'll send you a tip on PayPal. Stop that, you. An episode about country living sees George dressed up as Myra Hindley. Good morning. This is my pretend village shop, and Zippy is my assistant. Time to open the shop. I guess Mrs. George. Thanks to the location filming, we get some lovely line reads from local amateurs. Hello there. Hello, Jeffrey. We're just getting off for our picnic, so we'll see you later. Yes, have a nice time. Keeps flying for you. Don't work too hard. Children, I'm here. I've got you my lovely homemade biscuit. Come on. <gasps> oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Until they left in 89, practically every episode had a Rod, Jane and Freddy banger on various topics, such as working on a farm. Oh, we're country people, we work on the farm. Hopscotch. You must be careful that you don't fall down. Don't want you to bump your head. And even a reggae joint about being sensible. Be sensible. You know it's better that way. Be sensible. What more can we say to you? Now you know what you've got to do. Perhaps their best work was in an episode written by Freddie about keeping fit. Five, well, has anyone six, seen my chest expanders? Chest expanders. A bit cruel in front of those pair who can't even use one. Nuts! <laughs> Party buckle! Eight, oh, here they are! Nine, Good! Ten, one and two, two and one! I think the estate of Geoffrey Hayes need to have a legal word with the Captain Tom Foundation. Well, I think it's silly. All he ever does is run around the garden and talk about keeping fit. It's really boring. No, it isn't, Zippy. Geoffrey's running in the race so all the boys and girls in the hospital can have toys to play with. Zippy's personality is on full display here. Duplicitous. 
I think Jeffrey's silly. He'll end up looking like a carrot if he eats any more of that. Oh, hello, Jeffrey. I was just saying how nice carrots are. <gasps> Arrogance. Well, up everybody knows that. Well, bungles are grass. Jeffrey, Zippy thinks you're being silly. If you can't abide Joe Wicks, there is a home workout here. Now, join in with us, won't you? Off we go then. Now, shake your hands like this. Thank you. That's it. I want to very carefully stretch up and reach for the sky. <laughs> Come on, off your sofas and toilets, and let's all get yoked together. Is this an invite to join the polycule? Let the rhythm take you away. You'll be feeling fine. Hop down, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is she coming or isn't she? Of course she's coming. Move a little. Jane is fit, George. Let's agree to disagree. This is the future that Liberals want. Wooden lights, wooden seats, a wooden horn to blow. Bodger had a problem, his car just wouldn't go. In an episode written by your childhood's most hilariously named presenter, Christopher Lillycrap, the lads are on an outdoor kick. Oh, hello everybody. Bungle wants to build a tent in the garden. Yes, we're going camping. You and George have been camping the whole time. Well, really, Geoffrey? Sometimes when Zippy and George are behind a wall, it does look like they're weeing against it. I think it might work. It will be like a little house in the garden. We will want it, Bungle. Don't drink that. As evident by this clip, George isn't even toilet trained. What's wrong, Bungle? I want to go to the lavatory. Oh, Bungle, well, look, go over there behind those bushes. Oh, must I? Bungle, I got my potty. Take that with you. Remember that rhyme? Zippy and Bungle in the jungle having a bit of fun. It was actually based on a true story. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Zippy! I don't want to resort to the ha ha funny rude edit of an old kids show again, but they're asking for it. Wait a minute, it's, uh, 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 here we are, yeah, yeah. Here, here, here it is, Bongo, down here, oh, it. under the sheet. Zippy. Yeah, that's it. Have you got it? Something's coming. I've saved me the Jeffrey, a nice crusty one. Hello! Ah! This episode actually has a great punchline. Oh, 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 that, that's better. Oh, a good night's sleep. Come on, everybody, I'm hungry. What are you talking about? Breakfast time? It isn't breakfast time, George. It's half past seven at night. Time for bed. But it can't be. Well, it is, Bungle. Listen, you've only been outside half an hour, not all night. Although, consequently, we discover Jeffrey goes to bed at half seven. But Zippy, I was just about to have my bedtime cocoa. This is a man deep in the grips of a terrible depression. Well, good night then. Oh. And you can't blame him, living with that lot. Take this for example. Oh, listen, there's someone knocking at the door. Well, I didn't hear anybody. Just a minute, I'm coming. Oh, hello, Horace. Oh, I am glad to see you. We're just having our tea, but I'm sure there's enough for you. Oh, an imaginary friend like Tyler Durden or the shadow man who's watching me record this right now. Can you just back off a bit, mate? Fucking hell. Oh, Jane, Freddy, I want you to meet my best friend, Horace. Oh, oh, oh we'd nice. love to. Well, where is he? Here. Well, where oh, I'm... careful, Rod. You nearly stepped on his foot. Jane does a sort of photo fit based on Bungle's description. He's got a bright red sweater and some bright red shoes. His socks are blue and green. Where'd Bungle meet him? In a drain. Ooh, if Bungle has a special friend, then 
and we won't make a fuss. You'll probably make a fuss when Horace tells Bungle to bite your arm off. Horace says, yes please. Is Horace staying for his tea? Well, of course he is. And this is Zippy. <laughs> Hello, Horace. <laughs> He's over here, Zippy. Oh, 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 the gas. How silly of me. Zippy, Horace isn't real. Is he? No, of course not, George. He's just Bungle's pretend friend. Oh, I'm sorry, Geoffrey, but sometimes Horace is very naughty. Although given a choice between their imaginary friends and real friends. Oh yes, I mean I understand what you mean. I mean Jeffrey's not exactly adult, is he? I mean, have you ever seen a prick like that in all your life? Yeah, yeah, yeah several times. Yeah. Sippy, what the hell are you talking about? The fucking garden of Eden. <laughs> Let's sidestep for a moment to the 1980 children's sitcom Take a Chance, a vehicle for Dawson Chance who you saw on one of my Royal Variety vids. It's notable here for the presence of Stanley Bates, aka Bungle. Even in his naked form, he's recognisable from mannerisms alone, as if Bungle's been run through a human filter on an app. And Bates is such a delightful presence, you can't help but imagine an alternate world where he played C-3PO. And it was fabulous. <laughs> Mr. Dawson chants the Rosemary Hotel. Oh, I wonder what it is. Perhaps his mummy's baked him another cake. Oh, <laughs> hello, Dawson. When circus trainer Claude Bottoms shows up, we get a rainbow reunion, as that's Roy Skelton, alias Zippy and George. Animal trainer <laughs> from the circus? I, I used to be the human cannonball, sir. Well, what happened? They fired me. <laughs> Talking of sitcoms, you know I love my wallpapering slapstick, and One Rainbow gives us some of the most chaotic on record. Hello, can I give you some help? Oh, hello, no, Jeffrey. Right, right. Now then, this won't take long when you've got an expert. Oh, no. Right, here we go then. Oh, right, uh. oh, Jeffrey! Oh, sorry, Rod. You're right. Oh, don't! Well, I really enjoy wallpapering. Here we go. Then. We need some more paper. Oh, going. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, sorry, Freddy. Here you are then. I don't believe it. Bye bye. Thanks anyway. Bye. Oh, oh. start again. Come on, Ron. Let's get that down. Oh. The most surprising plot in an episode written by Rainbow's creator Pamela Lonsdale sees Zippy fall in love with CITV presenter Debbie Shaw. Like your dad fancying newsreaders or the Babe Station Babes off Babe Station. Turn it back on, turn it back on! No, I want to play a game! Well, what you say to me, Zippy? Oh, it's nothing, it's nothing! Well, let me see, Zippy! No, it's mine, it's mine! <laughs> it's interesting to see the brash, cocky bully reduced, as all males are to a pathetic wreck by feelings. Oh. Well, hello, everybody. Sure. Hello, Zippy. What do you do? Oh, uh, I was just doing a, a drawing uh, to, to, to send to Debbie on the television. Oh. Having bidden their time for years, the others really hone in on his weakness. Oh, but I want to see her. Oh, Debbie, Debbie, Debbie. I want to see her. I want to see her. I want to see her. Oh, look, George. It's a picture of Debbie. <laughs> Zippy's in love. Give it back. Zippy's in love. Now give it to me. Zippy's in love. Give it to me. Stop it. Yeah, come stop on, it. stop it, you two. Don't be so mean to Zippy. Aside from everyone encouraging this relationship between an adult woman and puppet child, most disconcerting is Bungle sleeping and snoring with his eyes wide open. Although Zippy's got a system. Sometimes you get some truly unexpected guests. Well, I'm glad I'm back home now. Oh, come in! Hello, you must be Bungle. Marlene! Yes, I am. Uh, who are you? I'm Sue. Oh. Well, can I come in? Uh, yes. 
Oh, no, no, I mean, no, no, you can't. Why not? Uh, because I don't know you. More of an upper hand guy, eh? A daddy long legs walked by. Oh, I wish that I had legs like that. I thought that was one of those disgusting close-ups from Ren and Stimpy. Though that does fit in with the occasional nightmarish quality of some of the interstitial cartoons. Time to say goodbye to you now, but don't forget, will you? Be sensible. Always let someone know where you are. Be good. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye! In 1992, after two decades on screen, Carlton outbid Thames Television for the ITV franchise, and Rainbow was cancelled. Just one year later, a national campaign resulted in the show's return. However, this would be without Geoffrey, who discovered he'd been sacked by reading it in the paper. You look like a scarecrow! But Mum wasn't please. talking to you! I'm sorry, Zippy, I'm Oh, just... why don't you go and do something sensible for a change? Huh? Oh. But in 96, Geoffrey, along with Roy Skelton and 89 Bungle Malcolm Lord, produced their own reboot of sorts, with GMTV series Mole in the Hole. Everyone's basically doing their rainbow characters, just in different outfits, and Mole in the Hole lasted 26 short episodes, airing during the same period as second official reboot, Rainbow Days. Does it have the wind oh, It's going to be 26 degrees today. Would you like to buy one? If you win, you get a brand new sports car! Once he'd vanished from television, Geoffrey Hayes became a Where Are They Now? with frequent tabloid stories on his inability to get TV work, in which he sadly became a punchline. An example of the fickle nature of fame, down on his luck and making ends meet as a shelf stacker and taxi driver. He even played this up in an ad for Virgin Money, which leaves a rather foul taste in the mouth. So, Geoffrey, if you'd had a simple guide to financial planning, do you think you could have made more of your money? Yep. A dance by Geoffrey and Bungle. Thank you, Vince. Right now we're in a period where all pop culture's just serving up whatever you loved when you were growing up. But the late 90s is where this began, fascinated with revisiting the shows of its youth through an ironic adult lens. This era is when Rainbow got its real second life, falling straight into that fad of, imagine stuff from when you was a kid, but rude. The theme was remixed into a rave anthem, practically an official release, given the original cast were the ones promoting it, which led to them dancing with Sean Ryder on the word. Those who'd grown up with Bungle Bonds and were now at uni could grind their jaws off with Jeffrey and Co in person, under their touring Rainbow Disco Roadshow, sets helmed by DJ Zippy. But this blue version isn't the rainbow we grew up with, and if anyone's the British equivalent to Mr Rogers, it's Geoffrey Hayes. 20 years in our homes, always happy to see us. Mm. Oh, hello everybody, nice to see you again. And when it's over, already looking forward to when next we meet. Well, time to go now, but we'll see you again soon, I hope. Take care, would you? Bye-bye. Jeffrey died in 2018, but left many hundreds of episodes of a show that's fully deserving of its place in history. 
Let's take one final one, titled Super Bungle. Yes, it's me, little George. You have a problem? In Bungle's fantasy, Zippy's fulfilling his destiny as an alien warlord with Geoffrey as robot henchman. Oh, master of all toys, King Zippoid, I have the last sack of toys from the planet Earth. <laughs> well done, Mr. Jeffrey. It's surprising this Mad Max Jeffrey doesn't pop up more on lists about early childhood fears. <gasps> I knew it was here, hand it over. <laughs> no. Yes, no. I said hand it over. I don't know whether him being possessed makes it more or less scary. I'm here. The great Zipoid has me under a spell. He's made me his servant. He is my master. There's also some classic shithousing from Zippy. At last, Zipoid, we meet face to face. Now what have you got to say for yourself? Hello? But by the end, we're back to normal and everything's fine. Ooh, your dressing up is very good, Bungle. <laughs> and that's the thing. Generations of children knew this was a gang they could rely on, comprised of some of our very first friends. Bungle stamping his feet, George being all coy, Zippy bragging like a cocky little knobber, Rod, Jane and Freddy coming over for a song, and Jeffrey holding it all together. It's like they say on those wall hangers next to the Live Laugh Loves. Sure, life brings its storms, but there'll always be a rainbow. <laughs> well, I better go and get change now, but uh, don't you get yourself dirty, will you? See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>